Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. As I mentioned before, there are a multitude of reactions to the gospel. You have the opportunity during this procession, this quiet procession back as we sort of prepare our hearts, to think about how you respond to that gospel. And what questions come to your mind, maybe what answers. So keep that in mind. I want to read to you from Philippians. <clears throat> Be of the same mind, <clears throat> having the same love, being in a full accord and of one mind. Is that who we are? Are we in one mind? Are we in one accord about how liturgy should be done, uh, theology, politics? Eh, maybe not. I, I know I had this normal and wonderful experience with my oldest brother, who I've been trying to convert for years. So we're at the hotel, the big atrium, and my sister goes up to get ready, making a mistake of leaving Gordon and me together. Gordon will probably be listening to this. I'm right, Gordon. <laughs> and for two hours, people come and go sitting down to try to have a quiet breakfast. But if you've noticed anything about my family, there's nothing quiet about us. And for two hours, I try to talk my brother into listening to what I want him to listen to. And for two hours he tries to talk me into listening to what he wants me to listen to. And we're slow learners because we've been doing this for 30 years. I'm still right, he's still wrong, but he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> and if anybody's listening to us talking, it sounds like we're very intense in what we do. But in one sense, we are of one mind. We love one another. And we can disagree intensely and still have communion together. We are of one mind that God loves us. And lucky for us, we felt our parents loved us. And that, that gives us a foundation. And Paul is wanting to give us a foundation in which to enter into the question of authority that Jesus is talking about in the sermon. By what authority? See, the day before Jesus came in and overturned the tables of the money changers and, and drove out all the animals, he didn't drive the people out with the ropes and whips, okay? Um, at least it doesn't say that. So, but he's been meddling with their authority. And the challenge challenge for the Pharisees and the religious people, the good people, is they had made up their minds pretty much. I mean, by the time you get to our age, or Trouty's age, okay, Audrey, you're sitting there, I have to say it, or Audrey's age, I think we made up our minds. We built our Foundation. We built on our foundation of life and we've got it pretty much under control until something disrupts it. Have you got it all together? Have you figured it out? When you discuss religion or politics, do you discuss it in a way that you know it's just, you know the answer perfectly? <laughs> Clint and I have had some of the same conversations my brother and I have. And he, Clint nodded and says, yes, he has figured it out. Now Paul is saying, even Paul hasn't figured it out. Even though, as we know, he comes across as intense, as my brother and I do, and he comes across as convinced, as my brother and I. But Paul, even Paul, is saying, open your hearts and your minds. When you're engaging other people in any conversation, because one of the things I keep saying is each and every one of us is a walking 
sacrament. A walking outward and visible image of God's image. We are creating the image of God. And so somehow we've got to learn to respect each other, to listen to one another as a child of God, as God. That's why I tell the Lord, I'm God, listen to me. By what authority do I say anything about God or anything in the world? And my concern is that so many of us, including myself, have some agendas. I have an agenda of God's grace that sometimes keeps me from hearing other people's theology of God's judgment. I believe in that open door of God's. I believe that I can come to God with anything and that God will forgive me for anything. And that's my foundation that I hang on to. That's my agenda when it comes to theology. But even that needs to be open. The, the Pharisees and the, the religious leaders had gotten it figured out. They figured out how to balance Rome's power, the religious power, their spiritual power, and they were so clinging to their own agenda that when God, God walked in front of them, God talked in front of them, God healed in front of them, God loved in front of them, God invited in front of them, and the people who did not let their agenda get in the way were able to taste, touch, feel, hear, and receive the grace of God. Maybe, maybe if we could focus on what we perceive at least to be God's agenda in our lives and in this world, we might do a better job of listening to one another. Always recognizing we see through a glass darkly. Brothers and sisters, we need each other's opinion. We need each other's. It is an opinion, by the way. An opinion that is formed by reality and by our agendas and by our experiences. And there are a hundred different agendas in this room. There are a hundred different experiences in this room. There are a hundred different understandings of God's grace in this room and God's judgment. We need each other to hear the full story. I need my brother's input. Oh, Lord. Let me rephrase this. <laughs> I do. And so do you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So it's clear. <laughs>